stage used to be. If you ever look at Whitney Houston video, try it on my own, you'll see it was like one little box, you know, okay. black box style. Have to check it out. He went on to The Voice. First the run. The run went on. He was on season two when the next thing you know, he was no uh, The Voice. But black businesses thrived uh, because 1896, Jim Crow laws didn't allow blacks to buy. Purvis Young was a black street painter, homeless man. If you Google Purvis Young, I dare anybody to pull out Purvis Young and Google his name, uh, his paintings hang all over the world now. You know? It connects today with someone that had donated their collection uh, to be a former race car driver here at the archives. Collection I didn't know we had. So that hurt this community, you know. This community was, everybody came here. Muhammad Ali, uh, uh, that he, High 95. High 95 was the first air fusion. Yeah, so what they did was uh, demolish it and build the exact replica of it in the 1990s. So he was a uh, very smart gentleman. Amassed a lot of money as well. I started this period. We have one of the oldest ones that we have in the collection is 1938. It's not a 4-1. But it just shows you how far it goes back to this one. It's, these are reprints, uh, blow ups. Uh, but there are bars between me and the rest of the land. Uh, I have special reservations. Her husband, Charles White, and she married Francisco Mora, another very famous. She's a pro. <laughs> I don't know about that. There you go. Scale yeah, 1 to 10, 25. <laughs> Ryan would absolutely love this. He loves it. Mm. Which I do too. I, I like it. Yeah. It's a weird reminder of what he's missing at home. Probably a couple of should, yeah. Besides eating? <laughs> Um, I think just being able to take in all the history here, seeing the archives and stuff, and hearing about local artists here, nationally known artists that you know travel the world, just following their passion, similar to what I'm doing. But I'm, I'm excited for our sophomore season. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun, you know. Um, as, as many comments as I've gotten about the 500 last year. I just now realized if I finish one spot better, I'll win the Daytona 500. I didn't know that before. <laughs> so we're going to do that. You got to have the same amount of luck plus a little bit more. We missed four wrecks, five wrecks that we should have been in. And um, I, I went back and rewatched that race this past weekend and I was like, how do we miss that, you know? Uh, so, just gotta be able to do that again. It would mean, you know, that I guess we're for real. You know, you solidified your name in the sport at the highest level. Um, I mean, it's Daytona 500, it's the, it's the Super Bowl of our, of our season. No, no other sport starts out with their biggest event. I do. I do. I think going out and, and you know, last year's 500 was just kind of riding along and, oh, okay, I should have I should have went there. Now it's like, okay, I'm going to, to that lane this time and, and going to make the more bold moves. With that comes more risk, though. So it's a, it's a trade-up of risk over reward.